It is at the darkest and most difficult moments that the armed forces of this country have always performed their greatest and most astonishing feats. As I speak, Sir Laurie Bristow, Her Majesty's Ambassador, has finally boarded one of the very last flights from Kabul. All remaining soldiers, diplomats and civil servants have now left. It's the culmination of a mission unlike anything we've seen in our lifetimes. UK troops and officials have worked round the clock to a remorseless deadline in harrowing conditions. They have expended all the patience and care and thought they possess to help people in fear for their lives. They've seen at first hand barbaric terrorist attacks on the queues of people they were trying to comfort as well as on our American friends. They didn't flinch. They kept calm. They got on with the job. It's thanks to their colossal exertions that this country has now processed, checked, vetted and airlifted more than 15,000 people to safety in less than two weeks. And let me remind you who they are, these people we now welcome, who we will now help to contribute in any way possible to the life and economy of the country. They're either UK nationals or people who have proved their loyalty to this country beyond doubt. Interpreting, guiding, helping to keep our people safe for two decades in a series of Afghan operations that has seen 150,000 serving men and women do a tour of duty, owned, which has cost the lives of 457 troops and injured thousands more. And after all that suffering, all that sacrifice, let me speak directly to the families and loved ones of those British troops who gave their all. Your suffering and your hardship were not in vain. It was no accident that there's been no terrorist attack launched against Britain or any other Western country from Afghanistan in the last 20 years. It was thanks to the bravery of our armed forces who fought to knock out bin Laden's networks. And thanks to the devotion of British troops and aid workers and diplomats and others, we've helped to educate 3.6 million girls. And whatever the future may hold for Afghanistan, they will have that gift for the rest of their lives, a gift they will pass on to their daughters as well as their sons. And though we would not have wished to leave in this way, we have to recognize that we came in with the United States in defense and support of the United States. And the United States military did the overwhelming bulk of the fighting. And though we now leave with the United States, we will remain represented in the region. We're doubling our humanitarian assistance, development assistance this year to 286 million pounds. And together with our allies in America and Europe, and around the world. We will engage with the Taliban, not on the basis of what they say, but what they do. And if the new regime in Kabul wants diplomatic recognition, or to unlock the billions that are currently frozen, they will have to ensure safe passage for those who wish to leave the country, to respect the rights of women and girls, to prevent Afghanistan from again becoming an incubator for global terror, because that would be disastrous for Afghanistan. And we will use every lever we have, political, economic, diplomatic, to help the people of Afghanistan and to protect our own country from harm. If people look for evidence of the energy and spirit and values of this country, our United Kingdom, our willingness to show global leadership, to help the needy and vulnerable around the world, I would point them to the Kabul airlift of the last 14 days. I thank everyone involved, and I believe they can be very proud of what they've done.